Hello, and welcome to physics. Physics is a different branch of science than chemistry is. Um, chemistry, we deal a lot with stuff that you can't see. Uh, so there are a lot of pictures. In physics, well, it's all the stuff that you always do all the time. We're just going to put some uh, vocabulary to it and a whole bunch of math. Physics is where math and science get married. So um, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, math computations in this section of your science life. We're going to start with chapter 10. It's the introduction to physics. It's called motion and it's going to go quickly. Um, we blend chapters 10 and 11 just because chapter 10 is really, really basic. So don't blink because it's going to go pretty fit quick. Section 1 is all about what motion means. It means changing position. And so we're going to describe that in really basic terms so that we're all kind of coming from the same place. Your position is the place of an object, often in relation to other objects. So it has to do, because we're talking about motion, we, are talking, we have to talk about when something is moving away from or towards something else. And that something else is what we call a reference point. Uh, you, you choose something that you refer to when you're discussing something's position. So that could be um, the stop sign on the corner and how fast are you going in relation to that stop sign or in relation to that moving car. Uh, so we've got some different kinds of things that we're looking at and it all looks a whole lot like math word problems. Um, uh, we're going to define motion. Motion is the change of position over time. Now this change can have a stopping and a starting point or it could just have a distance and there is time involved and this is where we get the numbers uh, so that we can describe speed, we can describe acceleration which is speeding up or slowing down or actually changing direction and all of that gets to be a part of what we're looking at right now. Describing motion. We have relative motion and relative motion is the movement of something compared to the observer. So um, it all kind of depends on the point of view of the observer. For example, you're in a car and you're reading a sign as you drive by, as the car drives by the sign and you see the sign ads going by. Now the sign's not moving. Um, you're moving. It's your perspective. It's your reference point. So um, but you're looking at the movement of the sign because you feel like you're sitting still in a car and, and so that the sign is going by you as opposed to you're standing on the side of the road and the car is going by us. So then you're talking about the movement of the car. It's all, it's all in how you look at the world, but because you need to be able to do it from a lot of different perspectives, uh, you need to be able to talk about them and define them, and that's all we're doing right now is defining them. There are a lot of reference points. Usually we consider something that's attached to the ground or the ground itself as our reference point because we know that that's not moving. On a train with the windows closed, um, you could be sitting in a train compartment and everything around you is moving exactly the same speed as you are. It feels like you're not moving. So um, you could be sitting talking to the person sitting across from you and playing cards with them and having a cup of coffee with them or whatever. And all of this doesn't feel like it's moving because it's all moving at the same speed. And if you were to look out the window, that's when you notice the speed at which you're all traveling at the same time. So I'd like you to consider the fact that the ground is also always moving because the planet rotates, which means it's spinning around at about a thousand miles an hour, massive generalization. It's traveling around the sun at about 67,000 miles per hour and the sun is moving 125 meters per second in the galaxy and then the galaxy is moving at about 150 meters per second. So one thing is moving and it's got something else that's moving around it which has got something else that's moving around it. So you are going really, really fast. So to use the ground as a reference point is still like you sitting in a train car because the ground is moving too. But we need to define, when we're talking about um, physics, we need to define all of our terms. And so we're going to say this is our reference point and we're moving at a speed relative to this.
and that's section one. It's really just to find the terms. And if you remember the beginning of chemistry, the beginning of really any science class, it always starts out really slow and it picks up speed pretty quickly. Um, chapter 11, we're going to pick up speed pretty quickly, but we've got to get through all this introductory stuff. So section two is all about speed. Talking about picking up speed, haha. -ha. Um, so we're going to first learn how to calculate speed. We're going to define it first. Speed is how fast something moves or the distance something moves in a given amount of time. So when you're looking at speed, you need two constants. How far did you go and how quickly did you go? Did you do it? And the equation for finding speed is distance divided by time. And if you have distance and you have time, you divide it and that gets you speed. And speed is in meters per second because meters is the distance and second is the time. So you have a meters slash second just like you do in the problem. Now sometimes you're given the speed and the distance and the question is how much time did it take or you're given the speed and the time and you're asked how uh, how far did you travel and things like that. So that's where they start breaking it up. Now, if you're good at algebra or pre-algebra enough to be able to know that if I take speed equals distance divided by time and I multiply both sides by time, I end up with the third one, distance equals speed times time because the time on the bottom cross cancels out. So we're going we're gonna to try manipulating a lot of uh, science equations this way so that um, we can make it fit the word problem that we end up with. And she's keeping track of time. Um, here you can see that this chick on a bike who's really happy to be on this bike, she is traveling this particular distance and it's taken her from zero to two seconds. It's taken her two seconds to travel this distance. So when you're finding out the speed here, you're going to measure this distance and divide it by two seconds. And that's her speed in meters per second. Then average speed. You don't always when you start your car, you're not driving instantly 60 miles an hour. You do a lot of speeding up and slowing down. So usually what we calculate is average speed because speed is usually not constant. As you accelerate to get up to 60 miles on the freeway, you're speeding up. Your speed is constantly changing until you hit 60 and then you can maintain around 60. So we're looking for the average speed. So when you find that, you're going to take the entire time that you were driving and divide it by the entire distance and that's going to give you the average speed and we use this as speed but it really is just an average and I need you to understand that going in and but that's how we're going to work with it. We're going to do a little bit of graphing so we can keep track of our data and be able to display our data. Um, a distance time graph shows movement as time progresses. Time is always on the x-axis. It's along the bottom so that as you're looking at the line, you're looking at the line as time goes by. So that you know that in the first part of whatever time you had, this happened and then this happened and then this happened, but it's all, um, a, well from this perspective, it's a left to right uh, version so you can almost be reading that line. So here's what they look like. The slope of the line shows how fast it's going and then the whole and, and if you ever get a horizontal part of your line that flat line shows no movement. So here in this example you can see that the distance is on the left hand side and the time goes along the bottom. So as time goes on you can see the red part from number one to number two, you were traveling, eventually traveled 20 meters. And then for 20 seconds, you stopped. You did not travel any more meters. Your bl the blue line didn't gain or lose any meters from the original reference point. And then once you hit point three for the next 20 seconds, you traveled a whole bunch of meters and you ended up going fast. You can see that the slope of the green line is steeper than the slope of the red line. That means that you are going 
faster. You went a farther distance in the same amount of time on that green line, a farther distance than you did on the red line. So the steepness shows you how fast you're going. So you can just look at this and say, okay, so he's on a skateboard and he started at the corner and he, he went a ways and he stopped and he looked around and then he like shot down the hill because he was going a lot faster. And that's what this kind of a graph tells you just by looking at it. So they're kind of convenient that way. Now velocity is speed in a given direction. A lot of people use speed and velocity interchangeably, um, but really there's one very significant difference that velocity contains a vector. It's a quantity that has both size and direction. So you're not just going three miles per second, you're going three miles per second east. You've got two things. You've got a speed, you've got a direction. Put those together and that gives you a velocity or a vector. And those two terms are more interchangeable, velocity and vector. Vectors are used in airport management. Vectors are used a lot because you can go in any direction in a plane. It's not just north, south, east, or west. And um, where both the speed and the direction are really important. Um, in almost any traffic management, you get vectors, speed, and quantity. So they're good terms to know. And that brings us to the end of section two. Uh, next time we talk, it's on section three, which is describing the basics of acceleration. So I'll see you then. Take care.